What's up guys? We're gonna be going over everything you need to know about custom neck labels and a few different ways on how to print them. So let's roll that intro. So custom neck labels are important for a whole bunch of reasons. As somebody who owns or runs a clothing brand, custom neck labels are a whole other avenue for creativity. Plus they kind of add that finishing touch to the stuff you're putting out there. You know, it makes it look more legit, more professional. And as a printer, being able to offer custom neck labels just makes you look more well-equipped. Plus it's a great way to upsell and generate more revenue. But whichever one of those two people you are, custom neck labels are very cost effective very easy and we're gonna get into exactly how that's done today. So let's start off with the shirts themselves. Every time I show myself printing neck labels on this channel, I seem to get this question more than once and that's where I get shirts without a tag in them. And well, I don't. Shirts without a tag in them do not exist. Every manufacturer that makes blank garments is required to have a tag in it before it ships out. But the vast majority of the stuff that's out there today comes with a tearaway label in it. And by tearaway, I literally mean tearaway. Most of the time these things rip out super clean and when they do, you now have a nice blank canvas to start making some cool creative stuff with. Now of course there still is stuff out there that does not have tearaway labels and don't worry, that's not gonna stop us. All you have to do is find the neck taping of the shirt here, fold that back in half, grab a pair of scissors and cut as closely to that taping as you possibly can without damaging anything and then when you fold it back over, it will cover up any remnants of that label ever being there. So now the design portion of the label. This is where you have a lot of flexibility but still some rules to follow at the same time. I get asked probably every day what information needs to be in my neck label and this is gonna kind of vary depending on what country you're in. I know within North America you absolutely need to have three things inside of your neck label. The legal name of your company, where the garment was manufactured, and the fabric content of the garment. So if your logo actually has the legal name of your company built right in, like mine does, you're golden, that's all you need. Alternatively, if you wanted to use a logo mark, a symbol, anything like that, you can do that as well, but you would either have to have the full legal name of the company still somewhere within the label, or you would have to register for either an RN or CA number and add that somewhere into the label as well. Then the country of origin. This is something I see people get confused about a lot. The country of origin has to be where the garment is manufactured. So if the shirt is made in Mexico, Nicaragua, somewhere like that, that's the country you put on there. A lot of people get confused and because they're printing it in Canada or the US, they will just go ahead and say made in Canada, made in the US. That's not the right way to go about it. It has to be where the garment itself is manufactured and that will show on the tag itself before you tear it off the shirt. And the fabric content, well that kind of speaks for itself. If it's 100% cotton, put that on there. If it's a 60-40 cotton poly blend, put that on there. Whatever that shirt is made of, that legally has to be on the label. Anything else after that, washing instructions, funny little messages, design elements, whatever, that's all completely up to you. You saw that my label here says printed in Canada on it. That's just something I like to add in there because sometimes people are kind of stupid and they see made in Nicaragua, made in Mexico, wherever the shirt is manufactured and they assume that the entire thing was done over there and that I haven't touched it whatsoever. So I like to put the printed in Canada thing on the stuff that I make so that people know I actually had something to do with it. Then there's the actual size of the label itself. And this is gonna kind of vary depending on your printer or you printers out there, what kind of setups you have to print neck labels. I've seen people get away with some real crazy neck label prints and I've done a few myself, but generally as a safe zone that you wanna stick within is like a three by three or three by four. Anything that fits within those constraints should be good across the board no matter who's making them for you. And if you're stuck without any ideas or designs for your neck labels, click the link in the description below. Head to roguelabmfg.com. We actually just put a vector pack of neck label designs up there that you can drag and drop your own logo onto, change all the information, all that stuff. Something nice, quick, easy, that you can just get it out there and not have to worry about it. And plus they look pretty cool, so there's that too. So with all that technical crap out of the way, let's get into all the different ways that we can print these things. The first way doesn't even involve any of our screen printing equipment because let's be honest, not everybody has that at their disposal, but heat presses on the other hand are a hell of a lot more accessible. So if you have a heat press like this hat press right here, you can print custom neck labels by using plastisol heat transfers. This is actually how I got started in the print game long before I had screen printing equipment and I still have some of these labels left over. I would order some plastisol heat transfers and slap them into my shirts using my heat press. But you can find a ton of places online that make these things super cheap. I think these came from Stalls Transfer Express. Um, a lot of people have asked if I make them yet, which I do, but I haven't started selling them yet. Haven't had the time to really dial it in. We've been really busy around here. I'm gonna get to it, but there are a lot of other places that you can get these from and uh, gang a whole bunch up on a sheet and make it worth your while. So all we're gonna do is grab the shirt by each end of the collar like this and bring it up and kind of center it up over top of your press platen like so. 
flip the collar down, you have a nice clean surface. We're gonna grab a cover sheet, just put it up over top of that. This is a piece of Teflon. And uh, we're gonna give it a pre-press for a couple seconds just to flatten it out and get any of the moisture out of the shirt. So now that the pre-press is done, we've got one of our labels cut out. I'm gonna put it up, center it up somewhere over top of the press, flatten like so. Put your cover sheet back down, press it. The press is done. And now we just peel this sucker off. We got ourselves a neck label. Now, not everybody has a hat press. I would say a larger size press like this is a lot more common, but don't worry, you guys can do it too. All you have to do is flip your shirt inside out, load it onto the press backside up and press that label on the exact same way. And remember, if you do print it this way and there's a back print on that shirt, make sure you take the proper precautions or you will destroy it. Because underneath the heat of the heat press, obviously that ink is gonna reactivate. And if you've got it loaded to the press, like threaded on, or if you've got it laid flat on the press, that ink will either smash and stick to the press itself. Or if you've laid it on the press, it's gonna stick to the shirt and you're never gonna get it apart again. And that shirt is gonna be garbage. In order to get around that, either grab yourself some craft paper or a Teflon sheet. Stick that in between the print and whatever surface is underneath it, and then you'll avoid having that issue. So that's a pretty easy and very accessible way for a lot of people to start printing these things. The temperature, time, and pressure settings that you use on your press will all be different depending on who made the transfers for you, but each one will come with a little set of instructions. So as long as you follow those general guidelines, you should be good to go. But now let's get into screen printing these bad boys. So first up is ink selection. And when it comes to printing neck labels, I always use Plastisol inks. And that's because the nature of Plastisol is to lay on top of the shirt fabric as opposed to penetrating into the shirt fabric like water-based ink does. So that means water-based ink is gonna be a lot more prone to penetrating too far into the shirt and showing through the backside of it, whereas Plastisol, pretty much that's never gonna happen. I've heard of people doing it with water-based ink and getting away with it, but I don't feel like it's gonna work across the entire span of garments that are out there, especially the more premium level stuff. Some of those shirts are very thin and water-based ink is just gonna blast right through that. So Plastisol, it's gonna work on pretty much everything you throw at it. And when it comes to the color, the most widely used color for doing this is gray. Somewhere between like a cool gray five and a cool gray eight is gonna be the sweet spot for you. Gray ink is gonna work across the widest range of colors available, hands down. And not only that is, it's also gonna be the least likely to show through on lighter colors like white. You can definitely use other colors if you want to, especially on darker garments where you can get away with pretty much anything. But uh, I like using gray just because it works so clean on pretty much every everything I use. This bucket lives beside my press at all times because I print hundreds, sometimes thousands of neck labels a week and I only have to reach for one ink bucket. So that's pretty sweet. Screen mesh selection. Typically you wanna use a higher mesh screen so you're not driving as much ink into the shirt because if you do, it's gonna blast through the backside. So you usually wanna stay between uh, like a 195 and a 280. I use 230 mesh screens pretty much every time I'm printing neck labels. That seems to work the best for me. So this is our typical layout for presses with forward clamps. Don't worry if you have side clamps, I've got a trick for you guys too. We'll get to that in a little bit. But when it comes to the layout, the first thing is make sure you're giving yourself enough distance from the edge of the screen frame to the bottom of your label. I would say five, six inches is where you wanna be. You wanna give yourself enough room to work, whether you're pushing or pulling the squeegee. Plus you wanna be far enough from the screen frame with your artwork to allow the mesh to do what it's supposed to do. And you wanna put three labels per side that will get you small through three XL, which will be by far the most common size run that you do. If the labels are really small, you might be able to get away with four per side, but like I said, you wanna make sure you're giving yourself enough room to work. You don't wanna be printing over open mesh that you don't need to be printing over. So three per side is the way that I do it. If I have to do additional sizes, I just make another screen. It's really not a big deal. And finally, you wanna make sure your labels are oriented either facing you or away from you, depending on the method of printing you choose to do them, which we're gonna start getting into right now. So screen's ready. Now we can get to the fun part. There is multiple ways to do this and multiple ways to set it up depending on the press that you have. I'm gonna cover all the ways that I've figured out so far. So first up is presses with forward clamps or front clamps, whatever you wanna call them. This press originally came with forward clamps on it, hence this thing. I switched over to side clamps and uh, thankfully that taught me how to do it both ways because you have to do it completely different. But when it comes to forward clamps, they're definitely the easiest. All you have to do is just move the screen side to side to be able to print every single size, then take the screen, flip it around the other way, print the sizes on the other side, you're done. Presses with side clamps like these, however, you don't have anywhere near as much lateral movement as you do with forward clamps. You have 
probably half the range. So you have to set up for it quite a bit differently. The best way that I found was to actually change my screen burning setup and lay out my labels two at a time centered all the way down the screen. With a side clamp set up like this, our side to side movement range is a lot more limited. Pretty much having the two labels in the center like this is the maximum, but they make up for it by having a ton of forwards and backwards movement. So because we have all that extra forwards and backwards movement, we can now really make use of the dead space in the center of the screen. And if you lay out your labels on the screen the right way, what you can do is print one size, slide it down to the next size, slide it down to the next size, then shift the whole thing over, print that size, slide up, print that size, slide up, print that size, and you're done. That's the smartest way that I've found so far to do it with just strictly side clamps. There still is a faster way with an added part. We're gonna do that one last. So with all of that out of the way, let's actually print some stuff now. I've got three different ways to do this. The first way requires literally no extra stuff. This is if you just have a screen, a screen printing press, and a squeegee, and nothing else. This second way requires an extra piece, but this is kind of a very common piece for screen printing shops to have. And the third way also requires an extra piece, but this is definitely the least common way that I've seen it done, but at the same time, probably the most efficient. This is the way that I do it now. So this is the first way, and this is for you people out there watching with literally the bare minimum of screen printing equipment. And because you have that, it's actually kind of a good thing because there's a 99.9% .9 chance that your press is only gonna have a forward clamp on it, and you're gonna be able to move this screen side to side as much as you please. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using the center one because I don't have that side to side movement. And I'm also gonna be printing this label upside down because I really didn't wanna expose a whole other screen just to print one neck label. So if you are gonna use this method, just make sure when you're exposing your screens to flip these the other way around, all right? But anyways, all you're gonna do is pick whichever size that you wanna print and line it up with your center mark on your platen. That's why I have registration marks above these things. That's literally the only purpose that they serve is just so I can tell what dead center is. I don't like eyeballing stuff. Once you're centered up, the next thing you wanna do is set the distance from the top edge of the palette down to the top edge of your artwork. When it comes to printing neck labels, you wanna be anywhere between half an inch to one inch down from the bottom seam. So I tend to split the difference and do three quarters of an inch. So that's where I'm gonna set this sucker up right here. Now we're gonna pretty much do exactly what we did on the bigger heat press. We're gonna flip this shirt inside out, make sure we got the back of it. And we're gonna load it up on our palette just like we normally would any other shirt and pull it down so that the collar edge is right on the edge of the palette line. All that's left to do now is print it. All right, that looks great. So once that's done, you can send it through the dryer, underneath the flash, heat gun, however you're curing these things and you're good to go. So method number two, the screen, we don't have to worry about. It will still move around exactly like it would in method number one. But in this case, we're adding this. This is a sleep palette, or in this case, a modified sleep palette that's been shortened quite a bit, specifically for printing neck labels. You can definitely use a standard sleep palette if you want to, but if you do, you're not gonna be able to use a standard 20 by 24 inch screen because they don't have enough length to get to the end of the palette. So if you do, you're gonna need to use something bigger like a 23 by 31. But yeah, this setup's a bit more simple than the first one, definitely a lot faster, and we don't need much other than this palette. Uh, line for the top of our shirt collar to go and another line to line up where the top of our neck label is gonna go And in this case that line between the top of the shirt collar and the top of the label is about an inch and a half Is where I have it set at on mine and it seems to land perfectly on every single thing I print I've never changed it and as you can tell this thing has been pretty well used I don't know how many thousands of neck labels I've printed on this thing, but it's a lot. So with this setup, this one is clearly the neckline. This one here with the arrows, this is the line we're gonna line up the top of the label on the screen to. And all we're gonna do is take our shirt and center it up over top of it, line up that top edge with that neckline, fold it down, get it stuck to our adhesive, and print. Getting it off here now and into the dryer could be tricky if you've never done it before. So let me give you a couple pointers on that. So clearly the ink is still wet and we don't want it to touch the inside of the collar on the front side of the shirt. So what we're gonna do is just kind of peel it back. And as we peel it back, we're gonna keep the collar open like this. And we're gonna do that the whole way to the dryer. When we put it on the dryer, we're gonna fold it and lay it down like that so that the collar lays below the print. And that's really it, it's not that hard. So now for the third and final way, which is also my favorite, this is the way that I print them now. I didn't even come up with this one actually. This method was shown to me by my guy Dylan, Upstate Merch. This is the pocket slayer or print slayer. It's a thing for printing pockets. Now I would not trust this thing in a million years to print pockets because the deflection on it was insane. But for printing neck labels, this is gold. I have modified mine quite a bit. Actually, I think I pretty much cut it in half. This is what came off it, but 
what this thing does is it just slides on the end of your palette and gives you a different surface to print on. So where this setup is different is instead of that old sleeve palette that I used to run on here and taking the screen and moving it around from side to side to switch sizes, now the screen stays stationary and we just move this little guy from size to size to size and that's it. It makes things so much faster, so much easier, touching the screen less. In fact, you're only touching the screen once and that's to flip it around so there's way less chance of getting ink and shit on your hands and touching it on stuff and getting frustrated. This is just an all around better way to do it. Plus with this thing raised up the way it is, you've got that little bit of drop off space behind it. So if you're say gonna print a hoodie on here or something like that, you can lay the hood actually flat on here and have a nice clean print surface. So that's also pretty awesome. You can find these things on eBay and from a couple print suppliers for like 40 bucks or something like that. I tried a few times to get one and the few places that I tried refused to ship to Canada. So Dylan actually ordered one, had it sent to his shop and then took it from there and sent it to me. So. Thank you, Dylan. That was super awesome of you. Let's show you how this thing works. Oh, my legs. So it's the same deal with this as anything else. You're gonna grab the collar of the shirt, bring it up to the top edge of that, push everything down. You are gonna have to set a much higher off contact with your screen than you normally would because of the height of this thing. But other than that, we're good to print. And there you go, crispy, clean, centered. All we have to do is just move that thing side to side to switch sizes. I think that covers pretty much all the questions that I get about neck labels on a regular basis and hopefully it taught you guys a few different ways to print them. As I said before, if you guys need neck label templates or designs, click the link in the description below, head to roguelabmfg.com and pick up our neck label template pack. It's fully editable and commercial use license is included with it so you can print away with it as much as you please. If you guys have any more questions about neck labels, drop them in the comments below. I'll be answering as many of those as I possibly can. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.